Human beings are capable of horrifying, spine-chilling deeds. We've all heard of the worst evils inflicted upon innocents, and every year a new case stuns us into silence, making us wonder if there's a line humans won't cross. In this series, we're going to look at disturbing real-life crimes. This is Cold-Blooded Crimes. Michelle Kristen Anderson was born on January 1, 1978. Although she had a very close bond with her brother, Scott Anderson, she had a very volatile relationship with her parents. Michelle revealed that her mother, Judy Anderson, was verbally abusive and that her father, Wayne Anderson, hit her constantly. She also had an older sister named Mary. Online Encounter Michelle met Joseph Thomas Tenro on an online dating site. As the relationship blossomed, the couple moved in together and rented a mobile home in Fall City, Washington. At the time, Michelle worked as a night security guard at Nintendo, while Joseph was an attendant at a Target store. The owner of their rented property also stated that they came up clean on all criminal background checks and always paid their rent on time. Public business records also showed that Michelle was trying to start a car painting business that made custom designs with her brother Scott. She also filled in as a carrier on her mother's postal route along Carnation, Washington. Although neighbors said the couple were very quiet and avoided eye contact, they also described them as bizarre misfits. No matter how small, any perceived infringement on their property was enough to set Michelle into a frenzy of anger. Whether it was a car parked outside her mobile home or a neighbor's pet in her yard, she was quick to lash out. One neighbor, Ryan Westberg, stated that he heard the couple yell and scream, and as he listened more intently, he could make out Michelle yelling at Joseph, you have no job, you have no money, you have no life. It seems after a while, things between Michelle and Scott started to debilitate. Close-knit paranoia. A former classmate of Michelle, Jennifer Chandler once visited the couple. She described their mobile home as sparsely furnished, with black material all over the window. The couple was highly paranoid and believed their neighbors spied on them, had tried to burgle their home, and were basically out to get them. She noted that Joseph was a little weird and was always talking about his spirit guide, telling him how to live his life. Joseph, who also had a speech impediment was keen on marrying Michelle and changing his last name to Anderson due to a disagreement with his family. Jennifer also said she understood Michelle was diagnosed with severe anxiety, but could not afford medications nor seek the help of a professional therapist due to financial difficulties. Their money issues forced the couple to move into Michelle's parents' property in Fall City and relive the volatile relationship she had endured during her childhood. Although Michelle regularly referred to herself as the black sheep of her family, her mother, Judy, brought monthly food supplies and other items. A neighbor is also on record saying the following about Michelle, money was always brought up, it was always, we are really struggling, we're really poor. On the other hand, she also often said her parents had quite a lot of money. Broken family ties. Joseph had a tenuous relationship with his mother rooted in financial problems. His mother and her two other children had been searching for Joseph for five years after he stormed off following an argument. Joseph was angry that his mother had ruined his credit by getting evicted from an apartment he had helped her lease. This bad credit made it incredibly difficult for him to rent an apartment with Michelle, leading them to move to a mobile home in Fall City on a property owned by Michelle's parents. A neighbor, Carissa McGay, said about Joseph's relationship with Michelle, he looked up to her and she answered questions for him. A family friend, Mark Bennett, pointed out that Michelle had been estranged from some of her family members for several months. He also said that Michelle's sister, Mary, had fears about her sister, not that she thought she was crazy, but Michelle was increasingly becoming antisocial and wouldn't return Mary's phone calls. He didn't think the family had felt they were ever in danger from Michelle, but Mary Anderson would later testify that she also would have been killed if she hadn't been sick and missed the Christmas Eve gathering. A Christmas to forget. On the afternoon of December 24, 
2007, Michelle and Joseph drove to her parents' home, Wayne and Jury Anderson, barely 200 yards from where they lived in Falls City. Armed and determined, they had arrived early before other family members could join the holiday celebrations. Once inside, Joseph created a distraction as Judy wrapped the Christmas gifts while Michelle brazenly attempted to take down her father. But when her gun jammed, Joseph stepped in and fatally shot both Judy and Wayne Anderson. They then dragged the two bodies outside the house, cleaned up every detail of their horrific act, and patiently waited for Scott, his wife Erica, and their two young children to arrive. Michelle shot Scott several times and killed him, but only initially wounded Erica, who managed to call 911 for help. The connection only lasted for a few seconds, and dispatches heard what appeared to be people arguing over loud party music. Joseph could snatch the phone away from her and take out the batteries. He then fatally shot Erica and her two young children, aged five and three, under instructions from Michelle, who felt the kids would be too traumatized, having witnessed the death of their parents and wanted to leave no witnesses. As the police's effort to call back the phone went to voicemail, officers were dispatched to the address, but returned after they couldn't gain access to the property due to a locked gate. Arrest, trial, and murder charge. The bodies were discovered two days later by a co-worker of Judy Anderson, who was worried about her absence from work at the Carnation Post office. Through the window, she saw bodies on the flow and immediately placed a call to 911. While the county detectives were at the scene responding to the call, Michelle and Joseph turned up about three hours later. The police became suspicious after the couple neither asked about the welfare of Michelle's parents nor wondered why the police were on the scene. They were then immediately taken in for questioning. Eventually, they admitted to the murders and were arrested. In her taped confession to detectives, which was played for jurors, Michelle admitted that she had planned the killings for two weeks because she was tired of everybody stepping on her. She was also angry that her brother refused to pay back the $40,000 she had lent him over the years. She said her parents had also taken her brother's side, and she had been further provoked when her parents demanded she and Joseph start paying rent for the mobile home on their property. In June 2008, Michelle apologized for the murders and asked to be punished in the most brutal way, a death sentence. She tried to plead guilty in court, but was refused on a technicality because the prosecuting attorney was still deciding whether to seek the death penalty against her. The state law dictates that, except with the consent of the prosecuting attorney, the defendant may not tender a plea of guilty to the charge of aggravated first-degree murder, nor may the court accept a plea of guilty to the charge of aggravated first-degree murder. However, a statewide ban on the death sentence by the then governor of Seattle, Jay Inslee, meant that the most severe penalty would be life in prison without the possibility of parole. On March 4, 2016, nearly a decade after the massacre, Michelle was found guilty of six counts of aggravated first-degree murder. In April of the same year, she was sentenced to life imprisonment. Joseph, her boyfriend and accomplice, was sentenced to life in prison a year earlier on May 13, 2015. No ladies first, this time around. What are your thoughts on this horrific event? Was the joint business between Michelle and Scott a bad idea? Should her parents have demanded rent from Michelle knowing her financial difficulties? Do you support the death penalty? Let us know in the comment section below and do not forget to like, share this video and subscribe for another episode of Cold-Blooded Crimes.